Hi everyone and welcome back. We're on the road currently rescuing Sultan. Um, this bike ran out of fuel oh, maybe eight months ago and uh, he left it sitting since so this is it, this is what we got. Uh, it is in a sorry state. It, I mean it was barely it was barely running great when he had it if we're being honest. Uh, so I, I don't really know where we go from here but today I will throw the battery on charge for an hour or two clean the carbs and we'll see if we can uh, put some life into this thing that's a, that's a new dent oh, there look that's a new dent I wasn't there interesting uh, how are we looking overall it just looks really dirty overall it will probably polish up okay right I'm gonna get this loaded we'll get it back to the garage and we'll start with the basics of what we would do No, that was a different one. What have you spilt on the seat? It looks like a cigarette. Did you have a cigarette? Um, okay, so we're all sorted, we're back. Apart from the extra thick dust, uh, what are we looking at? Um, we need to get the... That's handy. Um, or not. What the hell? We need to get the battery on charge. It's one of the first things we need to do. Everything's hand tight. Get the battery on charge. That's always the first thing you do because if you can save a battery, it saves you 30, 40 quid. Batteries have gone up. You used to get a battery for 20 quid. Um, it's gone up now? Yeah. It's, How much is Well, you're now, you're now paying for batteries, kind of 30, 40 quid. That's too much. I paid my battery. Um, everything's gone up, Rabjab. Everything's gone through the roof. So I'm going to pop this battery out. I mean, how does this battery even come out? I guess we take off. I guess we squeeze it out through the middle. I'm going to throw that on charge. It looks like a fairly new one. We probably bought it last time, so it should charge. Although it's a Taylor battery, so nowadays, unsure. And then the first thing I want to check once that's on charge, I'm going to go and get some fresh fuel anyway. And I want to poke my head into this tank and see how rusty it is. But I have concerns that that tank is rusty. Um, that's the main tank. Now, unless there's a fuel sender on the bottom, you can't really, you haven't really got a, a huge gap to clean this. You've got that pipe there, so finger gas, stuff like that. On the old bike, I took the tank out and I flushed it and cleaned it. Uh, we can't even really tell. What I can do is put a little bit of fuel in or try and suck up something that's in there, chuck it in a bowl and see what it looks like. Um, before we kind of work out anything else. So battery off, I'll throw it on charge. I'm gonna go and get some fresh fuel in case we're ready for a start up later. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can put an inline fuel filter from the uh, pump. So the fuel line comes up here. Which one is it? So it's this one. Yeah, we could put an inline um, fuel. Oh no, that's the feed pipe into here. So where's the carb feed pipe? That is this one here, this one. So um, we could put an inline fuel filter on there. As it has a pump, it sh it'll be fine, it'll pump through it. And actually there is a filter here as well, so that will help as well. Um, what we can do is put some fuel in later, give these carbs a clean, and then check, pull this one off, and check that it's flowing clean-ish. There's nothing to stop you putting a second inline fuel filter as well. It wouldn't, you know, it really wouldn't hurt as long as the pump has its uh, pressure to sort that out. Uh, so the batteries here, one of the things I find with the Tainer batteries is that they just don't top up the levels of fluid. So we've got, so these ones are lowish. This one's got none in it at all. This whole cell here has none in it at all. That one's okay. They're kind of okay. 
none in it at all in that one and it's not like it's leaking uh, I mean if I ever ordered from them you know recently I haven't been but if I had I was telling them to make sure they topped up the batteries before they sent them because they got kind of slack in the end but now I, I currently as you know I currently don't use them because they've just become unreliable their prices have gone up their quality has gone down and and I mean that battery is what nine months old and uh, yeah that whole cell has no fluid in it at all it's lucky I've got some okay so batteries on charge front brake feels fine because I used it to get it up and down the ramp but wouldn't hurt to pop it off and give it a spray um, what we need to do really is get the carbs um, a bit of a clean so because it's been sitting for eight months with E10 that's a no-no so uh, there's the bowls there you can get to that one okay we probably need to strip this side a little bit these carbs are, were the first ever carbs that I worked on um, with this whole uh, sideways sitting system so basically you undo this carp and you pull the whole thing out and then you clean that uh, rather than um, pulling out the jets you'll see what I mean when I pop it off it has a very different setup uh, the other thing we could look at is this whole system here uh, th there's no reason why we couldn't block it and blank it off from the engine so it'd be uh, one here and one here uh, where's the first one coming from or you can cut the pipe along the way or block it off further down I think it will probably run best if it was blocked off this one will come off easy enough um, it doesn't even look too well that anyway that one would be easy enough to block off this one seems quite awkward to get to unless I can get to it from the other side but that's basically taking some of the um, crankcase pressure and it's putting it back into the exhaust system and it's something that uh, kind of has its ups and downs really all over the world when you read about it um, it's an emissions thing but also these bikes always ran with a bit of a splutter they always had that bit of a splutter and that was a system in place to to minimize that splutter problem is with this bike is it's running the the UK European exhaust system which is a huge muffler under there and it's got this weird emissions control as well so for a very early bike it has a lot of emissions control on it and I don't really get that if I'm being honest why at that stage it was like that but for now we said we wanted to have a peek in the top tank remember the top tank is just a spare the, the main tank is that one it has a pump and that goes down but I think we might get a bit of an idea as to how healthy or unhealthy this uh, this bike is uh, and considering the key won't go in it's a bad start really a little bit no oh, it doesn't look great does it no let me ch let me check from your side that looks right it's not even oh, it looks uh corroded I mean it doesn't carry much this tank it, it's kind of a funnel down there but if that one's like that that one's probably bad as well but I remember it was a right pain to get the tank out I think we have no choice the corrosion look I think we have to try and hope that the filter is doing its thing and that the fuel coming up into the carbs is fine Otherwise, it's, it's too much work, really, for, for what this bike is. Um, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't mind putting in the earlier tank and putting the fake one back on. They looked better, I think. Uh, some people liked that. Some people hated it. I want to give that a bit of WD-40. No, on my bike, it was a fake one. Yeah. Um, my bike was the earlier model. Right, I'm just going to spray a bit of WD-40 on here. It's all a bit... Eesh. Throw it. Oh, 
So when you're working on these carbs, you only really need to worry about this bit, this bit that, that holds and distributes the fuel. Um, the funny enough, you should have bungs at the bottom here. The bungs, the E10, they're rock solid. I mean, they're gonna have to go in. We've got no alternatives. Shows you how much they don't like E10. Let's see so you can hear it, look. This is, so this should have been a soft rubber. Yeah, listen. It's rock solid. Um, so that's not ideal, but let's pull this out. Let's give it a clean. Basically how this works is the fuel goes in through it. It sits upright. This fills up with the fuel and then it distributes it from here rather than uh, the old traditional system that we're used to. So uh, this kind of, you've got your jets in here, one jet sucking it up or letting it out, one jet doing the, uh, well one will be the main and one will be a pilot. So um, three jets, which is quite, you know, quite different in some ways. And like I said, this whole setup is different. Uh, this rubber is okay, funny enough, which is fine because it's normally compressed in. But um, at the moment, the bike obviously isn't liking E10. I, I, I wouldn't say it's over. I think it has some life left in it, but um, yeah, not it's not E10 happy at this stage. So actually in that carb, none of the jets were blocked. Um, that's good news. Apart from the kind of surface um, old fuel, that stuff, um, none of it was blocked. Problem with this stuff is once fuel hits it, it loosens it up and mixes with it. And then it gets sucked up through the jets and gets blocked. So. You do have to clean that out. Right, I'm going to put that one back together because it, it just can. And then look at uh, the other one. See, it can go either way with carbs. Normally one's worse than the other. My guess is that this one was the worst one. That one, my guess is that one will be clean. Uh, because that should have run out first. Because the fuel always comes up and fills up this carb first. And then when this carb stops filling up, it carries on along and goes into this one. So, don't know. Let's have a look. We'll pop that one off in a minute. I'll put this one back and we'll have a look. So, first carb's uh, back on. Second carb has uh, less residue in it. I did think it would. Um, but it'd be really tempting at this stage to say, ah, don't bother. Um, no, that's not the right thing to do. I'm going to pop it out and clean it anyway. A long-awaited return. My yours came back and uh, yeah, it's going to get the battery. I'm just doing what I normally do, moral support. And uh, yeah, I'm also on the bright side. I got red hair! Plus also, tattoos, tattoos, tattoos. We don't want to see your tattoos, man. Oh they, oh, they need to see the tattoos. Charlie's gonna edit that. <laughs> we'll see, Charlie we'll see. That, <laughs> we'll bloody see. After us, stop fucking interrupting me. <laughs> so, um, after a um, long thought, I just thought like, hey, um, I don't really use this. I, I, it's just sitting there, wasting away. Dust. Just doing nothing. Um, I decided, hey, like, I might as well um, sell it. Because uh, just, like, r I'd rather have it in hands where it's being used and actually like, being ridden on a daily basis because I normally walk to work or take a train and for the, for, uh, for the ULES I don't think it's worth like doing the whole ULES thing if I'm only using it like what like twice I've been using it eight months so. <laughs> There's no way of that. That bag's had it. Even happening. Scrap it. All right, let's move it back. Um, but even so, it sounds like. It sounds. Why is it I don't know, Rabjo. Bye. What's your thoughts? I don't know. Like my first thoughts are that it's. 
it's kind of more hassle than it's worth in some ways. Should we parts it? Should we? I'm not even sure at this stage. I'm not, yeah, I'm not even sure at this stage. <laughs> 